So what we'll do is go to global config and type in TFTP server. And from here, you have a few options. In this case, we're going to use the flash since that's where the file is going to be located. And then we select the files that we're going to be using. Uh, so in this case, we'll use this for one of the files that's required. And, you know, at this point, we can just hit enter. But as you can see here, you could also put in the flash and then a forward slash in the, the full directory path of the file. And then you would follow it up with alias and then the file name like this. And what that would do is then the phone will look for this file in the root directory, but even though it's not there, this alias tells it the exact location, so it will still be able to download it. However, in this version, it doesn't look like we need to do that, so we can just leave it like this and just go and continue on and on for every single file. It's a little bit tedious, but once you're done, you can just save your configuration so that, uh, in the future you can just copy and paste in there. So now we'll move on to setting up the call manager to create a file to tell the phone which firmware to grab. We'll go to the uh, telephony service and we're going to choose our, we're going to choose load and then it'll give you the list of the phones that you can uh, select. Um, in this case we're going to use 7970 and then it's going to ask for the file name and we'll give it the 7970 loads. I think you can actually do um, uh, create CNF as well um, once you have those updated and the last thing you have to do is create a DHCP pool and tell the phone with the option 150 where to go to get the configuration file so to do that we will say um, we'll, we'll start with the exclusion address so we'll say IP DHCP exclude excluded address and start with the lowest which is 10.10.10.1 and the highest of 10.10.10.10 and then we'll create our pool so IP DHCP pool oops and we'll call it phones and we'll say network is 10.10.10.0 class C subnet and then uh, we'll say the the default router is going to be 10.10.10.1 the DNS server, we can just give it 4.2.2.2. And then the option 150, we'll give it IP address of 10.10.10.1. And that should be it for your DNS configure or your phone configuration for initial boot. Okay, I'm now loading up the CME and this, or uh, CME. I'm now loading up the Cisco IP communicator that should communicate with the CME. And uh, by default, they have a auto registration, so it should register. And there it is. It just registered. Phone has registered. Um, the reason for that is, like I say, by default, the auto registration will allow any phone that you have on the network to auto register. However, it will not have any. Uh, phone numbers or extensions or really any features. It just authenticates, but you can't do anything with it. So the first thing that we're going to do is go in and create some DNs and assign uh, telephone numbers to the DNs. Um, and then we will asso associate the phones with the DNs, uh, the buttons with the DNs that we create. So for starters, we'll go to global config and then we will uh, type in ephone-dn and it'll ask for a tag so we'll just say dn1 now from this point you can press enter now and it will create a single line phone the only problem with the single line phone is you're not going to be able to conference transfer have call waiting or anything like that uh, so usually i use the dual line configuration so we'll just add the dual line at the end there and press enter and that will allocate resources for that DN and then uh, we will give it a number so we type in number and we'll give this say 1001 enter and then we'll just create a couple more uh, lines uh, DNs I should say and we'll give this one 1002 and one more with 1003 
So now that these DNs have been created, uh, this is actually where also you would add um, your hunt stop channel and other features, your your call pickup groups and things like that. But I'm not going to get into all the the features and over line overlays and things like that um, in this video. I just want to show you a, a basic configuration. So since we have the three basic dual lines uh, set up, um, what we can do is since the auto registration is enabled, we can do uh, show ephone. Oops. Do show ephone, if I can spell there. And as you can see, it automatically created ePhone 1, 2, 3, and 4 for these particular phones. Um, you can see this one's a Cisco 7960. Uh, this is the Cisco IP communicator. This is a 7970, and this is another 7970. Uh, these are temporary configurations. Uh, they are not saved until you actually uh, create it. Um, if you wanted to you know, change these around, um, you'd have to unregister the phones and then create them in the global config. But for demonstration purposes, we'll just leave them the way they are. So ePhone 2 is actually already associated with this MAC address. So what we want to do is uh, configure it permanent. So what we'll do is from the global config, again, we're going to say ePhone and 2. And to associate it uh, with the phone, uh, you put in the MAC address. So we'll paste this in. And now we can assign the buttons. And from here we can assign, say, button 1 will be DN1, so extension 1001. And we can also make line 2, or button 2, uh, DN2. So um, you, two of the button 1 and 2 will be assigned to 1001 and 1002 respectively. And we hit enter. So there you can see that um, it's already uh, added. However, it's not changed here. Well, you have to restart the phone in order for that to take effect. And as you can see, once it takes effect, uh, you now have two extensions and you can actually call each other, uh, each extension. So I can call myself from 1001 to 1002. So now you can see this line is ringing and you got the little ringing animation because um, I'm just calling myself. Um, another thing we could do um, while we're on here is we created three lines, but let's say if you just wanted to uh, monitor that line. Um, one quick little feature you can add in there is we can say button three will monitor DN number three. And so if we restart that, now 1003 shows up here, however you can't use it. And if you try to you know, pick it up, it's going to dial 1003. Now notice it comes up as busy here because we don't have a phone assigned to it. So let's go back up. Uh, we'll just grab, let's say, one of these 7970s. That's uh, ePhone 4. So we'll just say ePhone 4, Mac, uh, put in the MAC address of the phone, and we'll say button 1 is going to be DN number 3, and we'll restart. And that one, uh, does the, the 7970s actually take a little bit longer to restart than the 7960s. So once it comes back up, um, I can show you what happens if we call that number. Notice, um, you know, when I call this number, it just rings. Uh, with the monitor only is anytime that line's in use, whether it's ringing or off hook, anything of that nature, you, this line will turn red. Oh, and one other thing is that just to show you with your restart options. Uh, let's go down here. You have, uh, you have, so down here you have the reset and restart. If you do a reset, it will be a cold boot. If you do a restart, it'll be a uh, warm boot. So anyway, if we call 1003 now, that phone is actually ringing, but notice how this line turns red now because we're monitoring that line, and that's showing that line is in use. So based on what we've covered so far, we can now call between any of these phones from the soft phone or the hard phones. They can call one another. Um, we can assign buttons and you know call within the local calling area. 
And if I get some time, um, I'll try to.